What time is it? I don't want to be like a slave to my thoughts. There's things that I beat in my life, things that I had to like overcome just to like be a better person. Circle puts the shot in the air. Good! The game's over and the Bulls have won. Michael didn't allow what he couldn't control to get inside his head. As creative as an artist, it can be easy to get focused in on our own disciplines and ignore how much we can learn from others. But opening up a little becomes clear that the drivers of success across many different paths can be boiled down to similar practices and techniques. MJ. Oh, Harry did it! Hey, Michael shakes the finger! J. Cole typifies this approach, speaking a lot about how his youth playing basketball informs his mindset as an artist. So this week I wanted to use him as a model, focusing in on the valuable comparison between athlete and creative. We're going to look at advice on mindset and dealing with setbacks. But firstly, let's cover the art of training and how a good approach to practice can make the rest of the game feel easy. Here it is again. Oh! This is Creative Minds, and as usual, drop a like if the video is valuable to you, and thanks for watching. When you don't write for a while, you wait around for the inspiration. That's the thing that I had to cut out, because you can wait forever and nothing will ever come. And then when you come back, one of the main things I notice in the process is like the trust you have in the things that you say or the things that want to be said, like the ideas that come to your mind that want to come out and they want to be written down, you second guess them because you haven't been in the momentum of trusting and, and seeing results. So that first line that comes, you're like, oh, no, no, that's trash. Oh, no, I said some shit like that before. Oh, no, that's corny. I don't know. Instead of just being like, yo, it's a first line. I think the key components to that mindset is once he stepped between those lines, nothing else mattered. That was his safe haven. Nobody could get to him. He was able to perform in front of millions of people and he never wanted to let them down, but he practiced extremely hard, which made the game very easy for him. From so much practicing of all the different aspects and understanding film and the other players and what their tendencies are and being so well prepared, he always had the edge over his competition. Complain about nothing. Ain't got no time or no patience for lists. They be making a who they debating. It's better. Let's face it. He wanted the greatest. No Bill Cosby shit. But coming back here, this might be my last moment of moving how I used to move. Waking up every day, dolo. Just being able to write, focus on music. I came up here for like two months. Every morning I woke up, I had to write a verse before I can go to the city and go to the studio. And then after the studio, got to drive all the way back to Queens. Wake up here, write again record again, and then go. Well, it was a great pickup game, and the confidence came on with it, you know, making a game winning shot. I could see a little gap in, in between defenses that mentally I knew I could get to, not physically I could, I could get to. These are the things that started to come back to me. <laughs> So we've heard how the foundation of these two is really those daily practices and building and maintaining the good working habits. Now in part two, I want to look deeper into their mindset, look at how they both deal with the comfort zone and the value they put on openness and a constant desire to challenge themselves. This past five years has been a fight against comfort. I was chilling. What I noticed was with that feeling of comfort, I'm like, damn, this is the moment that a lot of your favorite rappers hit a crossroad where they did what the fuck they set out to do and then the fruits of their labor started working against them. That same energy and that same like passion they put into the craft was gone and it was replaced by like comfort and luxury. I started a month earlier than I've ever started. And I wanted to get back and enjoy the game. I just wanted to play it. I felt I had to do that again. I had to put forth the work on the basketball court. Michael's mindset in the training was extremely unique. I mean, the most competitive individual I've ever met. Uh, never wanted to lose at anything. I always felt like somebody else was gonna outwork them, so he wanted to outwork them. 
uh, knew what his weaknesses were, knew what his strengths were. Uh, he had a big thing where he used to say, hey, listen, I'm going to turn my weaknesses into strengths. And he did. And what you notice is every year there was uh, evolution in his game. There was something that he added, whether it was a new shot, a new move. He was never satisfied, uh, no matter how many championships, how many titles, what people said, how many accolades he got, he always wanted to get better. What's up, bro? Good morning. I knew you was up. I had to make a real decision. Oh, uh, question. Them files you said. Are you okay with getting comfortable, anyway, chilling, mailing it in, waiting around on inspiration? If this is as high as you ever got, not career success-wise, but from a skill level, like have you wrote your best song? Did you leave no stone unturned creatively? And when I thought about that feeling, I was like, nah, I'm not cool. Same thing. If you've come this far, thanks for watching. In the final section, I want to look at some of the greatest skills that creators and artists can find. How to manage fear and failure, and techniques we can use to control the many distractions that the mind throws at us. So if my mind is racing, and it might be nerves, or it might be there's a bill due, or it might be this is happening in the family, let I'm it. noticing it, and I'm trying to let it go. slow, let it go, but also not fight it. Bring my attention back to like, my breathing, something that's currently happening, the sound of that fan, your my mind will start going to something else. Like, oh, my mom said something on the phone, boom, 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 and I'll start thinking about that. And I might go on a 30 second trip on that thought, and then I catch it like, oh, look what just happened. It's fine, let me bring my attention back mm. to that fan. Something that's like present moment. And like, the, I want to become a person that does that every day. Mm. Not just when like, I feel anxiety or right. I feel stress. Cause I, I'm like, yo, I see what it does for me in those moments when like things are like stressful or like I'm feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. It settles me, it brings me like back to the current moment. I can't imagine what it would do for me. If you did it every day. On a Tuesday in the crib. The big downfall of a lot of players who are otherwise gifted is thinking about failure. Michael didn't allow what he couldn't control to get inside his head. He would say, why would I think about missing a shot I haven't taken yet? Let's say drinking, right? Mm -hmm. Seemed inconsequential to me, right? But then I started to notice around the time I was like, yo, what, what am I doing this for? Like, why am I doing this? And then tracing back all the things History. in my life that, where did it start, where my childhood, where did it come from? And I was like, let me stop doing it. Mm -hmm. I would never even would have thought the day would have came where I would have stopped, stopped drinking, because to me it wasn't a big deal, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But this is when I noticed it was a big deal, because when I tried to go out that night and like not drink, I could feel the pull in the tug. It wasn't like I was like, yo, I ain't drinking no more. And it was like, cool. oh, easy, yeah. no problem, no. I felt the pull in the tug for mad long like putting myself in these situations. And when I noticed that pull and that tug, that like, I didn't like how, how it was making me feel. Mm -hmm. So I attacked it head on. Put, I kept finding myself in situations where I would want to do that, right? Yeah. And every time I said no and was successful, I felt more empowered. There's gonna be a capacity crowd today or close to it. And everybody who came to the ballpark today Came to see that man you're looking at right there and see if he can indeed hit some major league pitching. Harry, this is his first time in a major league park. And when Jordan decided to make a run at baseball, we can learn a lot from the relative failure he found on the pitch. And while the world was seemingly laughing at him for trying something new, Michael worked harder than everyone else and did whatever he could do to get better. What it did teach me was don't be afraid to try. The worst thing, that can happen is it doesn't, it doesn't pan out the way that you envision it. But at least you know that by giving it a shot. His work ethic was the best I've ever been around. He would hit early in the day. He'd hit off the breaking ball machine. He would come in after regular batting practice, hit some more before the game, and then would hit again after the game. I'm out for this week, but I hope you found something valuable in the piece. And let me know in the comments below if anything in the video connected specifically with your process. If you want to continue watching, here's a couple more videos from the channel. And good luck with whatever you're working on this week.